guys. Welcome to the Full Octane Garage. Today, we're gonna to talk about the car that we've all been waiting for. I've been waiting for it. The new to me Jaguar Project 8. It's actually a 2019, it's a Jaguar 2019 XE SV Project 8, because that's the way that uh, Jag likes the letters and names. Um, this is the fastest car, the fastest four-door sedan on the Nurburgring as of today. It is a 200 mile an hour car. It's got 592 horsepower from the factory. I think the torque is 516, zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds. Uh, originally designed to have 30 or 35 here in the United States and 300 worldwide. And from the, what the dealer explained to me was that there are actually just 19 in the States and 220 worldwide, even though the placard on the dash says uh, one of 300. Uh, again, I've been searching for this car ever since Melissa and I went to Amelia Island on the day before I bought the GT at auction from Russo and Steel. All right, here we are at Russo and Steel. Russo and Steel. Got our uh, bidders pass. These are the drink tickets. But these are the uh, bidders passes. So, uh, hi, I'm Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> We're good to go. Uh, this is the car that brought me here. That is the 1 of 40 XKR SGT. We had the opportunity to see the prototype uh, Project 8 sitting out there in front of the Ritz Carlton. And uh, we went and took a look at it. I told the guy that uh, I was looking at buying the GT, and if he says, if you buy the GT, you can come back and start this one up. So we did. Uh, and that was the first experience with the Project 8. I quietly fell in love with the car. Uh, kind of back on the radar though. Super expensive, super rare. Kind of like the GT was. It was one of those things where, well, that would be something I'd always want, but it's never gonna happen, so don't worry about it too much. Uh, but kind of like the GT, uh, fate intervened and made this happen. How the Project 8 came to be in my garage, a good buddy of mine uh, from Blacktop Rally, uh, Josh, sent me a text and it was, it was a white Project 8. And he does this a lot, he gets me in trouble. Uh, but the, the car was still at the list price, $189,000 basically. And it, uh, but it was white, it did, it did look like what I was looking for, uh, but it just wasn't a, it was more than what I thought I could do. Uh, but out of curiosity, I jumped on car gurus and uh, flipped her a little around on Google, which is what I do. And I did find a satin on a satin gray with black stripes, absolutely beautiful Project 8 in Pennsylvania, uh, which is 850 miles away. And the price was much more reason, it was $160,000. Price was much more reasonable. Uh, but at the time, really, uh, I needed to move another car in order to make it happen. The R8 was on the block, so I uh, looked at trading the R8 down there, and they just didn't get to the numbers that uh, we needed to get. Uh, but I was really pushing to make the deal happen anyways. And then just on a whim, uh, the Thursday morning, I jumped on Google once again, did another search and this particular Project 8 showed up. Now it doesn't have the side Jag decals that define the Project 8 so much and the hood decal is actually different also. Uh, the original Project 8 has a giant SVO circular decal that goes across most of the hood. Uh, uh, but it, it was a factory deleted by the previous customer that ordered the car that didn't take delivery on it. Uh, but the perfect color, in actuality, the spec matches the GT even better the way it sits. And so, gosh, every time this happens, my ball gets rolling as far as the cars are concerned, and then I don't get any sleep at night. And uh, so I called and I talked to a gentleman named uh, Eduardo, hope I got that right, at uh, Jaguar Easton in Columbus, Ohio, which is where this car was located, which was about 400 miles closer than the other one. Because the other one, I, was, I would have had 
extra expense in shipping the R8 and then shipping the Project 8 back, where this could be done in part of a day. Uh, drive up, do the swap, drive the car back the next day. Uh, so, did the deal. They gave me a great number on the R8, ended up about 30 grand difference. Uh, so, 30 grand to get one of the rarest Jags in the world that matches one of the other rarest Jags in the world and put them in my garage. No brainer, in my opinion. So, I went ahead and did the deal. Uh, next problem, getting the car back to Nashville. Uh, the weather sucks. It was uh, snowing a couple days before. Uh, it snowed here, definitely snowed up there. Got it looked like it was going to be weeks out. And so, I was a little nervous about that. Uh, so, now I'm still not sleeping at night. But I watched the weather, and on Friday morning, I came in, uh, got to my office about 6.30, got the morning meeting out of the way, and jumped on weather.com, checked the weather every place from Columbus, Ohio, down to Nashville, and I saw a window. I saw an opportunity. The, re the snow had already gone. They already cleared the roads up north, it looked like. There was a big storm coming in, which ended up being one of the largest ones in uh years here in Tennessee and actually shut down uh, Texas for quite a while. Uh, but I saw a window and uh, so I called Kurt, full octane buddy, and God love Kurt. He was already off for the day and on 30 minutes notice, he packed a bag. I left the office, drove 45 minutes back to the house, picked up the R8 and drove to Kurt's house. And by 9.30 or 10 o'clock, we were on the road. All right. Beginning the road trip, Kurt and I are headed to Ohio in the R8 to leave the R8 so that we can get the Project 8. As you can see, it may be snowing a little bit, <laughs> but uh, I think the roads are good. I think we're going to be all right. Let's go. Yeah, really going to miss this. Love this car. It is an awesome car. But this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I can always find another R8. <laughs> right? <No>! Yes. <laughs> I do love this car. It's badass. Oh, where do you want the water, sir? Kurt is wearing a parka and bringing a parka. <laughs> I'll shut it. Uh, roads were actually pretty good. Um, no complaints. There's a lot of salt. More salt as we got closer and closer to Columbus. It looked like they probably had 8 to 12 inches of snow on the ground but it was not on the roads. Uh, pretty good drive, really trashed the R8. I really felt bad. It's the R8, it's a, the 2018 R8 V10 RWS. I bought with 5,000 miles back in last June. All right, uh, we're about 80 miles out from Columbus, Ohio. We're in the R8, which has performed swimmingly. Huh? It's been good. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been driving for six hours. Really hate to see it go. But not that much. Yeah, well, I still want the Jag. <laughs> I want them both. <laughs> but uh, that's been a, it's been a good drive. Uh, should get to the dealer about, oh gosh, quarter to six. Uh, we've got, we're on a detour right now that's going to take us about 20 miles out of the way. Uh, but you can see, roads suck. But they're, the roads are dry, tons of salt and uh, tons of snow. Hopefully all this will be gone when we pick the car up in two hours. Well, I don't see that happening. Okay, here's what I see. I see James seeing the salt on the road with a new car. We're gonna have to stay until next Friday. That's, that's very likely. <laughs> uh, appreciate Kurt, by the way. Another half full octane garage for volunteering to ride up with me. Knees um, stuck in the dashboard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the RH been great been a great car put 6,000 miles on it or so in the last seven months and uh, now it'll be a great car for somebody else looking forward to the Jag so we'll see at the dealership so we show up at the dealer we get there about six o'clock because uh, they're an hour ahead we're kind of running out of time it's already dark um, the dealership Jaguar Easton in Columbus is absolutely beautiful it's probably four times larger than the Jag dealer in Nashville um, and uh, just a beautiful place. And the Project 8 was sitting in a delivery bay and they could not have positioned that any better with the bow on it and everything else. It was, it, you don't get 
the three-dimensional aspect of how fat and mean and cool looking this car really is when you see it on this video or you see it in pictures. Uh, the white hides some stuff too, uh, but the, it really is, every dimension on this car is blown out. The regular Jaguar XE is a $45,000 car. Great car, two liter turbo, I'm sure. Um, this car only shares about 20% of the parts of the Jaguar XE. And I think on the body panels, it's just the roof and the two front doors. Uh, everything else has had been blown out because the brake size got went up, the wheel size, suspension, everything else blew the car out. Uh, Lots of airflow differences, things of that nature. I'll do a review on it later, and we'll go through all the particulars on it. But let's just say right now, this car just, it just looks so good out there. I, I was so happy with the decision. Uh, great experience up there at the Jag dealership. They gave me a car cover that's logoed with Project 8 on it. Of course, you get all the swag, uh, the keychains and face mask and all that that say Jag on them. And uh, it was just a, such a great experience. They, they delivered exactly the car they said they would. There was more with it than I thought. Um, the owner, Austin uh, Germain, I think his last name is, of the dealership, uh, FaceTimed me while we were out there. And we talked for a minute. He was just uh, probably glad to see the car go. It's been on the lot for a year. But it's a, it's a real special car. And I think uh, if you're looking for a Project 8, um, people don't happen upon it uh, and buy it accidentally, generally speaking. These are JAG enthusiasts that follow the JAG line and are looking for those particular cars and they know what the, the uh, Project 8 is. Otherwise, you're looking at a bunch of $45,000 XEs on the lot and then you see a $190,000 XE and you wonder what the hell could be different with this car. Well, this car is way too big for you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you want to drive it home then? <laughs> it's made for a tall guy. All right, you ready? Ready? It's a very special car, kind of like the uh, the GT. I've driven every, I've driven the XK, XKR, well I've owned all of them I guess, XK, XKR, XKRS, and then the XKRS GT. Every step was a better car. The XE was just one big ass step. Uh, but anyways, so where we are at now is, uh, we drove the car back, excellent trip, it's all wheel drive, the roads were still pretty good. It a uh, little bit of sleep when we got into Nashville, but uh, everything went fine. All right, this is Melissa's first time seeing it. Come on out. <laughs> Does that look like a two door, a four door Honda Civic to you? Hey guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I think Melissa likes the car. Or at least I think it's growing on her. She'll probably drive it pretty soon. Thanks for joining us at the uh, Full Octane Garage. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And leave us a comment down below. What do you think about the project date? Should I put stickers on the side, the big cat logo on the side, or should I leave it like it is, just like the GT? And what do you think about a Project 7 in my future? Should I go ahead and do that, or jump it back into an R8? We appreciate you watching. Please check out our Facebook and Instagram, and check out Driving with Melissa on Facebook and Instagram. There'll be a lot more of Melissa there. And also, don't forget to check out Full Octane Garage, uh, Full Octane Insurance. They can take care of any of your insurance needs if you have a collector or classic car. We'll see you soon at the Full Octane Garage.